Hey guys, welcome to Bite Me. This is Season 1, Episode 33, The Truth About an Appearance on OK High Podcast, featuring talking shit about Christy Gnome. You know what I think's great? Candid or not so candid discussions with friends about the ongoing bullshit that is the American government. Admittedly, I don't get enough progressive interaction all the way out here in the middle, but one thing that is nice is being invited to a live podcast with friends who do. John Scott Won't Stop, JD Con, and my dude, aka Tommy, to commiserate over our nation's worst leaders, including my very own Christy Nome, governor of South Dakota and recent number one fan of Lil Nas X. So today on Bite Me, it's going to be a little bit different episode structure for you, for your entertainment and mine. I simply release our bitch session to you. Enjoy. What's up, guys? Uh, thank you for tuning into OK High Network. I am here with JD Khan and Brooke, and we're going to get into some topics today. So uh, let's get into it. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. How's your uh, how are your nerves after dealing with that math throwing, tantrum wielding? Yeah, it's Dollar been Tree been man. A day <laughs> of yeah. I, I'm energetically not doing so hot, but maybe ranting about you know Christy Gnome will help with that a little bit. I'm hoping. Yeah. Nice little steam. Uh, yeah. Steam builder for you. Okay, guys. So uh, I've been hearing a lot about Lindsey Graham and what he said. I personally didn't watch the video yet, and I've been swiping past the videos that talk about it. So um, I wanted to like blind react to it and get everyone's thoughts. I they, I believe they've already seen what he's going to say about his AR-15 and all that. So um, we're going to watch it, and then I'm going to blind react, and then we can all discuss it. So. What's wrong with a serious debate after all of these shootings about assault weapons, especially about large... Lindsey Graham is such a bitch. ...a lot of stuff show contribute to these mass... Looks like a sandwich. There's nothing wrong about the... As a matter of fact, I would challenge uh, Senator Schumer to bring the assault weapons ban to the floor of the United States Senate. It won't get 50 votes, much less 60. I own an AR-15. If there's a natural disaster uh, in South Carolina where the cops can't protect my neighborhood, my house will be the last one that the gang will come to because I can defend myself. Uh, you don't have to have an AR-15, but if you, if you have one lawfully, I think you should be allowed to keep it. Most of these problems have, uh, have a lot to do with mental health. Count me in for addressing that issue. Red flag laws exist in 19 states. There's some things we can do. But at the end of the day, if you think uh, an assault weapons ban is what the country needs, bring it to the floor of the United States Senate and vote on it. Okay. Fuck that, douche. Um, yeah. So a natural disaster will cause gangs to go try to rob him where he's in. He has, I want to see, I want to see him shoot an AR-15. He has to look like such a bitch holding that gun. If anyone can make that gun look like a pussy move, it would be that. Like, yeah, yeah, so he thinks in a natural disaster, he's gonna, he's going to, um, use his AR 15 to protect his home. He's so stupid. And then he says, uh, oh, uh, oh, fuck, what did he say towards the end? I had a thought that I was holding on to with him, but I couldn't like get past how much of a bitch he looks like. Um, he likes to forget that, that we had an assault weapons ban until 2004. So this oh, yeah, is like yeah. a new thing of people getting getting ARs and, and having them personally. Well, he's all like, it's a oh, mental health issue. Oh, it's a mental health issue. Okay, cool. Uh, Lindsay, so how about this? How about we uh, enact universal health care, which would provide more access to mental health care, which would lead to less crime related to homelessness and drug abuse and um, or substance abuse in general, even though because that's a mental health issue. Uh and the violence surrounding both those things. Also, with mental health uh, services available, less likely crazy people are going to get a hold of their guns, and uh, less likely the Second Amendment is going to be attacked any further after that. Also, have systems set up in case there's a national or a, a an emergency, a natural disaster, so people can get resources so they don't have to, you know, um, it, it doesn't result in people not having and having to go to other places to, to get them. Like, just have systems set up so that they're protected during a natural disaster. It's not hard. Yeah. And I, I mean, and like, I you it's a lot cheaper <laughs> to do that. I'm not sure what he thought happened in um, Louisiana during Hurricane Katrina. They weren't like, 
there was no gang activity or uh, clan activity. There was none of that. They were everybody was busy, uh, like trying not to die. So, like, I don't really think the first thing people are going to think about is oh, natural disaster. Let's go take down Lindsey Graham. Well, I think it's any excuse to be racist, you know. Oh yeah, him and his ladybugs. Fuck that guy. Nobody wants right. Lindsey Graham's Viagra pills anyways. I don't know what they're going to loot his house for. Like, I don't know what he has that somebody would want. <laughs> He's just so gross. That cuts out every now and then pops back in, Brooke. Just a heads up. Okay. Um, I have an awesome graphic for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Re-upload a little bit later. Are we allowed to say just, fuck? Uh, huh? Yeah. Okay. I don't We're know. Is that... Oh yeah, you can you if we could We're say not fuck. monetized yet. We're not monetized okay. yet. But when we get monetized, we're gonna be we're gonna be a little cool about it. Um, real quick, guys, don't forget to subscribe to OK Hi here on YouTube. Be sure to click that bell and set your notifications. Also, if you can and you would like to, please go show us support on Patreon at Patreon.com/slash OK Hi. Also, give us a follow on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at OK Hi Network. Also, be sure to head over to thetruthfulgroomer.com to access all of Brooke's podcast and her blog and more content from her. And yes, then there's, do that. Then there's JDCon. So that's cool, too. I'm just here. He wanted to make an entrance, <laughs> but I said back on up. Yeah, I don't Brooke was the one I did it. Here. Jay has been very kind to me. I wouldn't have any of this if it weren't for him. So I don't mind him being here at all. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next topic at hand, which I think Brooke is going to be very excited for. Yeah. I'm going to get in here. And... All right, so we got this trash bag. I did zoom in on her. I was going to use the picture of her with her horrible uh, Karen haircut and her like broke yellow ass uh, highlights. But yeah. apparently, according to like a lot of articles right now, that uh, she was this rising star out of the conservatives, but now like it's falling out the wayside i mean she's trying to backpedal on um like overturning everybody's vote to make marijuana legal in the state of north dakota she was like super South. behind this uh post uh stopping trans people from uh playing trans youth from playing in sports until like all these sports organizations were like letting her know that they disagreed with the legislation all around she's a hot mess and nobody better to cut her than our very own Brooke. So, Brooke. Yeah, hi. I live in North Dakota. It's a shit show here. It's a fucking shit show, man. Like, uh, you know, she lost her base. I, I really believe that she thought she was going to do something with Donald Trump in the next four years, and that didn't work out for her. So now you see the things that you see. And Christy Nome also thrives on sensationalism. So when you see things like what she did recently with the sneak, I think she was talking about Jesus and there was some sneakers involved. Like, that's all for, she likes the bad publicity. Uh, little Nas X demon sneakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all yeah. for publicity. She likes that shit. But she's panicking Have a little. Have you seen because, that music you know, video yet? Huh? Have you seen his new music video yet? No, I have not. I was busy. Oh, you know. like I've watched it literally like at least sixty times right now, but I've watched it six times already today. <laughs> I'm obsessed. <laughs> well, obsessed. And what's great is all these Christian conservatives are going to try to cancel him for being gay, for making this video where he like rejects heaven, goes to hell, gives the devil a lap dance. It's fucking awesome, right? Like goes to hell on a stripper pole. I mean. Bravo. Like, <laughs> I have to say, as an elder gay in the community and being in the community for 22 years, I'm really proud to see younger uh, queer folk coming up. And actually, not just because they used to try to put out, we used to try to put out music back in the day, but it's real cheesy, like horrible electro club music, which was just not the ticket. But now to see uh, people like Little Nas X and Adore Delano and Sam Smith and all these other artists out there that are bringing like good quality music to the forefront i uh, i'm just excited to watch all of these conservatives that have been running around lately and be like mm, boo cancel culture we invented it but we're blaming the left like we always do and like you guys have a whole bunch of liberal tears snowflakes i can't wait to see them all cry and try to cancel them and be like complete hypocrites uh gnome doing what yeah. she does was like let me jump on the reactionary bandwagon 
yeah. I feel like everything she does is to be reactionary. And I noticed well, yeah, that a lot. Of meth, we're on it. You know, that's the South Dakota state slip. Meth, we're on it. Did you oh, know that? Meth and ease. Yeah, no. It's on billboards uh, all over the place out here. It says meth, we're on it. South Dakota. <laughs> like they, uh, like they're on it, like they're going to try to fix it, but it right. really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what Planning. she does. I yeah, miss the days when meth was homegrown too. Did you guys hear those comments recently? <laughs> oh, those are too much. So, uh, Brooke, as somebody living in North Dakota, like South, right? South Dakota. All oh, right, why do I keep saying North? Mount Rushmore, South Dakota. Okay, yeah. so South Dakota. Fuck me. Uh, North Dakota is pretty bad too, but we're a little warmer, like one degree well, warmer. I just, I have, every time I hear Dakota, I immediately think Piedmont, North Dakota, because of Coyote Ugly. Piedmont, North Dakota. And she says yeah, that. Yeah, we have a Piedmont here, stuck too. out of my head. Mm -hmm. So, uh, being from South Dakota, correction. Yeah. Uh, what is the vibe like amongst, so I know you deal with a lot of uh, Jim Bobs and uh, Toothless Terrors. Uh, every day. All day. What, what is their stance on uh, Gnome? And how, how... Do you think it is that Christy Nome was able to be elected for her position in such a conservative state, which is anti-woman? And um, yeah. Just so she's the worst representation for women we could have gotten. Um, but Christy Nome's whole thing is she was a rodeo queen back in like, I don't know, the 70s or some shit. She's actually. Um, it's per clown. It's yeah, that's right. Clown. Forgot. She she truthfully, if I'm being honest is actually very intelligent, but like, it's like book smart, intelligent, not common sense, intelligent. And she was a rodeo queen. And then her father died when she was 22. And I'm not even joking, a tractor accident. And like <laughs> she, they, she ran for political party after picking her family up by the bootstraps. I mean, she came from college and took the family's ranch over after the dad died and people pandered to that, you know, and she did work really hard to get into the good old boys club, but that was her whole thing. Like she sold the rest of us women to be a part of that. She protected their gun rights. She protected, you know, all the chauvinism, um, misogyny, like she represented all that. And they liked that because then we couldn't blame it on the men anymore because, oh, look, you've got a woman in office. She was the perfect tool for them. And I yeah, do mean, like yeah, she's, I mean, like tool in like the, the symbolic sense as well. Like she is a tool. Like Christy Nome is a stupid asshole. And so is Mike Rounds. She seems to be the, uh, a cog in the, uh, the wheel of the patriarchy. What were you yeah. about to say, Jay? No, I was just, I was just listening. I don't know a ton about um, South Dakota and politics. Um, I did a Brooke at the Truthful Groomer. I mean, <laughs> I do, but I, I adhere to her expertise. So um, I did do a, vi a video the other day about Mike Rounds and his stupid <laughs> statue and making a death threat to Joe Biden, although TikTok decided they wanted to pull that down. All right, yeah. Yeah, we're about to get into TikTok in a minute. Yeah. Um, so how, what is the vibe like? With, like they, They're saying she's losing her like support base. Are you yes. seeing any of that like locally? Are you seeing people, have you seen like a shift in their attitude towards her? Absolutely. They're already talking about Dusty Johnson was her predecessor. Just Dusty Johnson, <laughs> like just the name, like, oh, these That's idiots. A, yeah. But like, yeah, they're already talking about get her the hell out. Let's get somebody else in there. She they blame her for Trump not winning again, you know. And so that's why she's backpedaling on the transgender thing. That's why she's backpedaling on the pot. But it's too late for her. Like it's over. So she's going to get her final shots in while she can for the last two years. But Christy Nome, that's a done deal. I mean, I'm not Is she up for reelection uh, this year. Yeah, I mean, she'll try it, but I don't think she's, she's going to be governor, that. right? Yeah, she's, she's governor. She's your governor. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think that we have gubernatorial. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Uh, Goober elections <laughs> coming up, and uh, that's right. We need to pick out the boogers. She's one of those boogers. What's up, Tommy? What's up? I was shopping Glad all day. You can make it to your own show. I know, right? Hey, do you want to see what I, I got? I want to make a duck onesie that says "Come here, duck" for him. Do you guys? Do you guys want to see what I got him? Sure. Yeah. Let's okay. see it. All right, cut me out. I got to run downstairs and grab it. I'll be right back in like two seconds. All right, just wait out your I can't hear you. 
Who can't you hear? Tommy, he was talking after I like ended his screen. Oh. He, he just went shopping for his kid up. So he's like super excited. New dad. I'm like, wait till you have an attitude. <laughs> yeah, that's no yeah, fucking I, kidding. I tell everybody there is nothing good accidental backhand or like just putting your head out and be like, watch where you're running. You heard my you heard my toe. You know? So just my nephews all the time because I wouldn't spank them. So I just turn around. Like, oh, shit, I'm so sorry. And then you grab their face, you hold them close, and you like laugh, and then you be careful. Kids have rights these days, so. Well, I mean, if it was an accident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, fuck, man. Okay, so uh, while Tommy is running around, uh, Mr. JDCon has a bike with a certain uh, social media platform. Let's hear it. Oh man. Okay, so um, if you all haven't seen. Um, there is a particular kind of illegal content that is exploitative. Child porn. What's that? Child porn. Child porn. There's child porn on TikTok. Um, the fact that we, we had to um, report a specific account, which, by the way, a lot of people are reporting now that they can't report uh, these accounts anymore. That they go to report, it says that it's been reported, but if you go to the TikTok notifications tab... Um, there's there's no notifications that it's been reported or it's been submitted. They're blocking people from reporting these kinds of accounts. Now, finally, the account that had all of this child porn was banned last night, but they just popped up four new accounts. So um, I had a very angry day. I don't know if you guys saw those videos, but I had a very, very angry day yesterday. Because I was somebody was in Hawaii or somewhere. She had to call the police, have the police... Like show the police the the, the yep. animated gif and the video yeah, I do, and screenshots. Yep, I do, I do edit a video this morning um, that I was tagged in. She contacted the Hawaiian police department. They came, they saw, and they said that they're going to um, contact the local FBI office and start to work with them. I mean, I also did a video today saying like, if TikTok needs to burn, then let it burn. Like yeah. they would deserve it. Um, yeah. I I'm would a rather reserved on that. I see a lot of people wanting to leave TikTok when TikTok's not listening. And I don't know if it's the Long Beach in me or what, but I don't walk away from a fight until it's absolutely until I can't walk. Oh, <laughs> like, I want to be a part of TikTok's demise if they don't clean this shit. And by the way, I said this to you guys um, privately. I'm done with TikTok if they don't clean this shit up quickly. I, I will not yeah. I will not support or create content for a platform that that does not do anything about this stuff. If it was YouTube, if it was Twitter, if it was Instagram, like, yes, there's stuff on there, but they are really good at getting that shit off quickly. Um, and TikTok doesn't give a fuck. So um, if they don't, then, you know, what am I going to do? Keep, you know, creating content so people can um, engage more with the app? No, I'll, I'll try to drive people away from TikTok onto a different platform. Yeah, and uh, I... I just a reminder to everybody, because I've already done this, and um, they will email you and ask you several questions. Report TikTok to your local ACLU. So you have to look at the ACLU in your state uh, for discriminatory practices using their community guidelines to uh, put violations on people that are marginalized at a higher rate than they do anybody else, um, while they simultaneously uh, not only allow hateful and uh, horrible content, that actually does break their community guidelines on their platform and not just allow it, but like push it. Section 230 uh, protects you from what other people post on your platform. However, it does not protect you from um, discriminating against certain users while like by flagging them and taking down their videos and all that for something they haven't done uh, while like pushing and promoting videos that clearly violate the community guidelines because they're straight, white, and conservative or whatever. Like, yeah, I don't off I, TikTok, you're not losing your shit. Fuck not that, right. Yeah, as someone that works <clears throat> in this industry, I don't understand what their intent is because if they wanted to build a platform, even if they wanted to get back to dances and comedy sketches, this is not the way to do it. They are actively driving their user base towards a specific content type, which is controversy and illegality. They are stifling creators that are trying to clean up their own environment. Um, 
And they're going to get shut down because Apple and Google are not going to be liable for keeping them up. I mean, look what they did with Parler. Huge app. <laughs> they were making a lot of money from Parler. And that. if, yeah, and if, if TikTok, do, like, if they don't uh, start doing the right thing, if they don't start creating reporting systems that work, if they, if they don't start taking down these accounts, banning IP addresses, so these guys can just pop up six more accounts overnight, then Apple and Google will say, look, we can't deal with the legal liability. I don't care how much money you're making for us. You're gone. You're done. So yeah. that's the road they're on right now. And, and if it's they totally keep it's totally like doable because I have been banned from Omega. Still. Yeah. They can Somehow. do it. I don't know what I did. <laughs> but I got banned from Omega. <laughs> At the moment I'm glad they didn't ban the IP because I really want the the legal authorities to track those IPs down. And they're doing that right now. Um, so, yeah. you know, lucky well, that the accounts are still up, so they can track them, but unlucky that the accounts are still up because TikTok doesn't give a fuck. I'm curious. Yeah. Hey, you know, hey real I'm, quick, real quick. JD Con, you got some spring back. Like, it sounds like there's a spring or something in your, in your mic. It's very like, is, it, is this better? I'm yeah. It's when you're talking for a second, it'll like have a weird echo inside the sun echo. It's hard to find. It's like someone's like flicking a spring uh tommy oh it might be my boom oh i don't know like <laughs> maybe the, i don't know john nobody is hearing it but you <laughs> oh okay well then it's fine <laughs> uh, i heard it yeah. anyway, anyway that's my having range. a weird issue with jd cons uh no i mean he's got a sure so it's not like it's gonna yeah, but I've so, got a roadcaster and it's garbage. I just ordered a Go XLR Mini. That'll be here in a couple weeks. Oh, fucking nerd. Uh, so, Tommy, did you buy clothes for Kason? I did. Fashion show, fashion show, fashion show. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. wait a minute, I don't know your son's name. Did you say his name is Jason? Kason. Kason. Okay. Oh, so close. Get a, calm, don't, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> calm down. So, I'm, I'm sure you have to work with work. work. These are these two these two assholes are what I have to work with. Unfortunately, there was I was looking for something Easterish for him to wear. I went to five stores and found one shirt, and it wasn't anything like that. Was like you know, I thought was great for East. It was like great, so I was like, eh. But yeah, I didn't find anything, so I just bought him stuff for Easter. I got him this. Oh, nice. Oh. So yeah, dinosaur. Or oh, oh, alligators. Okay, yeah, it's good. I thought it was dinosaur. Okay, yeah, I saw dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's pretty adorable i didn't get him a ton uh it was just what i could find that i thought was really cute i don't know i got him some socks you know just normal socks he's whatever he has other socks too uh i got him this little rattly thing his basket <laughs> is adorable look at that right is that his easter basket it is his easter basket <laughs> i got him this thing oh wow octopus. Yeah, it's a little octopus. Wait, wait. Like the feet. Okay, here's the coolest thing. And for kids' clothes, this was expensive, but I thought it was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, that's good for you, yeah. But you do know that Antifa has a no camouflage rule. So he can wear those to meetings. It's dino camo. I have to check on my doggy daycare real quick. No, oh, I thought that was cute. That's what I got him so far. Oh, for okay. Did you get? Um, I saw one of your things about the um, about him chewing on your knuckle. Yeah, you can get um, um teething rings that go in the refrigerator. Oh, those yeah. So that'll help. Yeah, because then, because then, right here, they can tell you some tricks. I miss the good old days when you could just put whiskey on their gums and call it a. Call it a night. John, you never lived in those days. <laughs> <You> <laughs> I was raised those in those days. days. <laughs> what do you think about the things for alcohol? <laughs> his, his teeth haven't really started coming in yet, but you could tell it's starting, just, just starting to bother him. So, Yeah, or gel, baby or gel it, it, when it's really bad. But you can get um, teething rings that you put in the freezer, and uh, he'll just chew on that for hours. They teething tablets, but then like they had like a sedative in them, and like parents were abusing them. So, oh, <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> you know they make, don't they make like ones that are made out of mint? Maybe, maybe they still maybe. have a different yeah. format. I don't know. My my kids it's, have been babies for a long time. 
Yeah, I was gonna say it's been it's been eight years since my kids were in in teething years. Yeah. Yeah. A toothache's fucking kill. I have veneers for a reason. So I have a toothache like every other week. Got enamel deficiency. So Tommy, anything in the news you wanted to bring up? Uh no, I've been out all day. <laughs> uh I haven't really seen any any, any uh, did you see what Lindsey Graham said? No. About how in, this, in a state of emergency, like a natural disaster, he owns an AR-15, that the gangs won't come to his house because he'll be able to protect himself. I honestly want to see him shoot an AR-15. I, do I just see him like... Brr, uh, brr, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture him being <laughs> the little southern ladybug that he is. <laughs> Lady G. Oh my god. Do you guys yeah, want to have a conversation know. about the um LGBTQ medical bill that just passed in Arkansas? Yes, I did want to talk about that. I didn't have time to put together a graphic. So I think we should um start pushing legislation in every state that does this, uh that states an atheist doctor can refuse uh treatment needed treatment to somebody that is either praying to God to get them through it thanking god for um you know being like in the hospital when they needed to be or if they're wearing like a cross or a crucifix you know because it's against the atheist belief to talk about god and believe in god and to uh thank god for something that a human did for them like saving their life and i mean the hippocratic oath I, they really don't take that anymore but still like what drove you into getting into uh medicine to save lives okay um were you planning on not helping a gay person i mean at the end of the day if it's like life-threatening situation most of the time the person can't speak but um well one of the provisions is if it's an emergency then they can't deny you but any other medically necessary treatment they can say nope under moral and ethic and religious reasons i was actually talking to dr eric earlier today and like asking them like what is this what happens like you have a state government that tells you you can ignore your hippocratic oath but your license says you can't what do you do and he goes you hope that they follow their oath there's not a lot that you can I do mean, if they don't like i feel like that's a malpractice lawsuit waiting to happen it depends if it's if it's legal to deny them treatment then it's legal for them to do that yeah i mean the only time religious uh, freedom or uh, religious belief is ever brought up in any form of law is to justify bigotry, as AOC clearly pointed out uh, on the floor for one of the many, uh, my right to religion. I think the problem uh, that lies in rights to religion and the separation of church and state that Christians don't understand is uh, when it comes to your, your freedom of religion, you aren't the only religion. In fact, your own religion has like 30,000 different like nominations. So it's hard for like, which like, and here's the thing. I'm like, where does it say that you're supposed to let gay people die? They're probably going to bring up like a gay person um, stoned to death or whatever. I'm like, okay, so that's in the Old Testament. Let me catch your ass sl slip and eating a fucking uh, lobster or crab or shellfish of any kind. Or if I go to your fucking um, office and you're wearing uh clothes cut from two different claws. I'm going to take that shit, take a picture, take your ass to court and be like, no, 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 no. Where in their Bible are they talking about? Oh, the Old Testament? Well, the Old Testament also says this. Are we picking and choosing now? What's going on here? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Here's my question. Like, they only, It's only ever like religious freedom for Christians, right? Because they never say like, yeah, they never bring up like Jim Jones or what was that cult in Oregon that poisoned the salad bar? You guys remember uh, that? Oh, I don't uh... I do remember it. I can't remember the name of the cult, though. I can't remember the name of it. But they never talk about that religious freedom. It's just, no, we should have the right as Christians to discriminate discriminate against you. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, – <clears throat> but it's never like, oh, like, let's talk about Islamic, right? Because then you, they'll bring that up. Else? What's happened in the Middle East, then they'll bring up, uh, well, what happened to religious freedom then? It's just, yeah. it's So <clears throat> for those of you that uh, need, like, a little background in it, Mike Pompeo started the religious freedom – doctrine thing that he took to the united nations uh basically it was this uh 
pro-Christian Western type thing. The only countries that signed it were the most repressive countries in the world. None of our allies signed it. Not one. It was like Saudi Arabia. Like those were North Korea. Like I don't think North Korea signed it. But like those like repressive regimes were the only ones that signed it because they all knew like... I don't think that's well, a good thing if you have the most repressive regimes in the world agreeing with the policy you have. They don't care, though, well, and that's the problem. Like, they don't have shame enough to come back and say, okay, well, you know, these dictatorships said, okay, so let's let's not do it. They don't care at all. And, and I don't even know how this is benefiting anybody except for – is there a religious lobby, perhaps? Religious no, ego. <laughs> it's, so here, here's another thing that I think that Christians fail to understand is how the separation of church and state actually protects their religion. Um, when they try to force their way into um, our government, that would make us a theocracy, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. When a religion, or a re yeah. religious oligarchy, whatever. Um, when they push their way in then it's going to get to a point where everyone's going to be like, let's outlaw Christianity. Christianity will become actually, will actually become under attack by, and I'll tell you right now, um, Muslims outnumber Christians by a lot in this world. And if I'm going to side with anybody, I'll, I'll side with the Muslims to take down Christians. Are you like, sure? I think more, through law. Through law. I think there's more Christians in the world. I think there's like a billion Christians and either way. I mean, here's the thing. This law will get um, overturned the second a um, a Muslim doctor uh, denies a care to a white Christian woman because she's not wearing a hijab. The second yeah. that happens, they'll be back in court and trying to either amend the bill to only, um, to only apply to uh, Christians or they'll be getting rid of it instantly. Can I okay, ask you so, something? Yeah. What's up? What's the population in each of in each of your respective cities that you live in? Ooh. I'm going uh, somewhere with this. Is it more than like, I don't know, fifty thousand? Yeah, mine's sitting at about ninety six right now. And you guys are in Washington, right? The other two yeah. of you? Yeah. Although the, I have the, the nearest biggest city. Thousand. Okay. So here's yeah. the deal. Where I live is 60,000. And there you talk about like the separation of church and state and they don't recognize what rights are and aren't afforded to them and they don't understand that it'll help them. I don't think that like respectively in the bigger cities, I don't know that you guys can appreciate how crazy these people actually are. We have pro-life signs right above human trafficking signs. I mean, these people are really willing to kill for their beliefs, you know? So, I mean, when we talk about them going to such extremes, this could be going on for a while. Yeah, I mean, I have a well, small I mean, taste of that. Just, yeah, they down here by my house, there are actual farms, like cotton fields and cornfields and stuff. So, like, I've seen the giant, like, lifted monster trucks with the 16 Trump flags on the back. Uh, my neighbor across the street had a Trump flag with a picture of Trump in front of a, uh, of a lifted truck with an American flag on the back of it with an explosion in the background. So, I can't wow. get where you're coming from. So... But not even I don't even think as close as as what you're experiencing too. So like they hide in the rural Midwest, like that's where they keep it, and then they control the women with the Bible. Because nobody, no women really support Trump. They support pro life. That's their whole thing. That's control. And, you know? and here's the thing, Christians. Like when people ask people, like, why would you ever vote for Trump? They're like, oh, because pro life. I'm like, well, let's ignore all the abortions he's probably paid for. Uh, for 59 out of the last 60 years, our court has been, our Supreme Court has been majority conservative. When Roe v. Wade was passed, it was passed by a conservative court. Since then, every single president has said, we're going to overturn Roe v. Wade because they know if they say that, they can get the vote. And then do they actually have to try to overturn Roe v. Wade? No, they don't because they know they'll still get that vote. Oh, we just weren't able to get to it yet because Republicans are led, uh, Republicans have a blind and like fear mongering uh, worship for ideas that are going well they're also one issue voters just that's it if right, you're, yeah. you're yeah. pro-life they'll vote for you and that's all they need to know yeah, yeah. i i fundamentally think that like, as much as i like my i have a, a, a distrust for how this could be used i the way the education is being delegated to the states is not working yeah um, we need i mean 
we need to have classes on criminal justice. We need to have classes on the U.S. government and simplifying it because so much of like American curriculum is being delegated to <clears throat> the Constitution itself, right? Like this is the way things are. It doesn't really focus on the why or what's wrong with it. And <clears throat> that's a problem, right? Because it's really subjective in America. So it's hard to bring up, well, what's the problem with the Constitution without it becoming in some form political? But uh, it's it's just gotten to a point where we, we send people out into the world that have no financial literacy. They have no uh, idea about, you know, um, the government at all or who they're who they're supposed to be voting for or why or how to sift through information. They don't teach that in school. Like people don't understand how to, you know, check sources, how to look through that, how to understand information just to remember it. And. Uh, yeah, it's created a problem where people like can just listen to a guy like Trump and they pull what they want out of it, like the Bible. And then they, you know, like I heard Trump say this thing that sounded great. So let's do it. But they don't understand they're being played. Right. The Democrats do it, too. But we just have a bunch of like people that like like below average. It's like the the, the most uneducated voters of like England. But that's like almost yeah, the all ones people. with the double digit IQs. <laughs> right. We are and living think, the stupidest of times. The stupidest of times. Yeah, and I, I think bro, like we're living through a historic moment after historic moment after historic moment. Why? Yeah. <laughs> the history is the past. Leave it there. Like, why do we have to do it again? To show yeah, that and we I were think right Brooke and I, when we had the bullshit. JD wants to say something. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <You didn't laughs> I was just saying that I think Brooke and I have because Brooke, you have kids, right? Yeah. I think we talked about that. Yeah, so we have like the the. We're the closest to the um, to the education system because of our kids. Yeah. Um, my, yeah, my oldest is graduating next month, so um, I got to watch her go through public school system. And they technically have you know financial classes like um, how to do your taxes and all that. But the way that our wow. our education system they do now, they definitely didn't when I was in high school. Um, I think had government I how was to like write a check and balance a checkbook in sixth grade, and we spent two days on that. <laughs> right, but the problem is, is that the way our education system is structured is that they just want you to teach you how to take tests, yes, and then the rest of it is be as obedient as possible. Sit in your desks, don't say anything. Raise your hand when you need to speak. Use a number two pencil. Just use a pen. Do exactly what I say, and then Robot. when you go out, you are a well-trained factory worker that can take tests. That's it. Yep, a cog in the machine. Yeah, as somebody that mastered the public school system. And that's um, the other thing, too. Like, it's so like if you want to learn stuff on your own, right, it's so difficult to know where to start. And that's sort of the education system in a nutshell protecting itself, I feel like. Like, yeah, we're not going to give you the ability to go out and, you know, uh, have this taught to you uh, for like you know, obviously YouTube's changing things, but there's no way to like just start and like, hey, this is going to be the coursework. Like, I feel like <clears throat> with education, so much of it has become like, I went to X college, but the reality is I know a lot of pe dumb people that graduated from college, right? I know a lot of dumb people. Uh, you just got to pass on the C. What? 70% is all it takes. Right. So uh, there's a problem with our education system where it's focused on, I mean, really, how, how obedient are you? That's it. Right. There's some that's dele delegated on, uh, OK, you're the smartest in your class. But for the most part, it's uh, how well can you follow orders? Because that's what corporations want. That's what you're getting trained for is to get a job with a corporation. Maybe now so, but I was like notorious. Every single report card I ever had was straight A's. And then in conduct, I got straight U's. So I got an A in work. And I got a U in conduct. Or an F in conduct, basically. Um, and then I figured out how to graduate two years early because I wasn't trying to wait around for that bullshit anymore. I wanted out. Um, no, it was Q for Queen. They're like Q for Queen. What? Your report card. Never mind. Oh. Okay, sorry. I, shit. John's the only one that's allowed to make jokes here. <laughs> Drama. Well, I mean, you have to land the joke if you're going to make it. Just, okay, next time. There's. There's a there's a certain act that comes with having a quick way. Look, knows she's quick witted. She she's a smart ass. I do what I can with what I have. It's not a lot, but it's what I got. I I make pretty good I mean, mom jokes. Okay. <laughs> on Omega Live. <laughs> she's like, I'm a mom. Isn't Omegle, isn't Omegle just chat roulette? Isn't it just dicks? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, you have to be careful. You'll see one or two of them, but I'll get banned for not showing it somehow. 
Like, hmm. Been on it once and fought know. with like three people. For all we it's know. About, just like <laughs> always, just like all media platforms, uh, Tommy skates under the radar and doesn't get banned somehow. It's because I got a likable face, John. No, it's because you're a straight white man. That's yeah. You can it's got your mustache. They were like, oh no, nope. There's that that's statistically speaking. You're just mad because I can grow one. <laughs> Did you, so John, to real quick to touch on what to touch on what Tommy was saying. Tommy and I were actually talking about showing you guys how you can um the only difference between a person going to college and a person not going to college and what the education is is basically a piece of fucking paper. Uh, yeah. There's ways you can look up the classes at any college. Uh, Harvard offers a lot of free classes. Uh, Yale, all the Ivy League offer a lot of free classes. I think they have to for whatever reason. But uh, you can actually go like search out their class catalog and then look up what books you need for that class. Yeah, books are super expensive. Uh, Tommy has a trick that he likes to use where he can audition right before. It's a lot cheaper. Um, you can rent them on Amazon. You just have to have the uh, ISBN number. I cannot believe I remember what that thing is fucking called because it's a been a long time. time. I like I like textbooks, right? Um, but there's a, or like books that are written for like a really niche thing because that's usually books. what pops into my my head. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like it. Um, but yeah, you can like lecture stuff like that. But I I always feel like to be completely honest, I learn more um, on my own than I ever did in college. That's that's just yeah, that's the reality. Well, well there, what there, college do was give me the ability to find the information. Uh, so. so yeah, like also the syllabus doesn't always work to a person's learning style. You know what I mean? Uh, some people like to jump around in the information because they can keep connecting it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and they like kind of build up a foundation and a big picture that they can take a step back and look at and fully understand. Other people like everything in a specific ordered manner. Um, some people like it ordered in like by importance versus like least important to most, most important to least. So, I mean, I think it's great when you can do it on your own. I am a huge, huge proponent for independent studies for kids. I flew through high school. I did high school in like six months and just to wait for the credits to overturn um, when I did it. And I believe, Brooke, you homeschool, don't you? Yeah, it's actually called unlearning. You know, that's a that's a thing. It's different. Homeschooling tends to have kind of a religious connotation around it. But unlearning, um, it's sort of like a European type of studies. Like they learn through their own experiences and each uh, interaction you have with them is like a teachable moment. So like in other countries, they'll teach children, OK, climb a tree or OK, the answer isn't in the four that's supplied to you make your own. That's what my daughter does. So okay. have you found and like I'll, that's like, kind of a a good um, alternative to like regular public schools and stuff? Absolutely. I hate I used to work in the public educational system. I have all the same things to say about it as Jay does. It's trash. Standardized testing is trash. We are absolutely raising right. robots. So homeschooling was great for me and my daughter. And she has learned a great deal over this last year when I took her out because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. She does miss the social peer aspect of it. So she's going to go back next year for that reason. But if I could make it so that there was these independent the studies, you know, where she did have more socialization, I mean, I would absolutely, absolutely recommend homeschooling, unlearning to anybody over yeah, the education my, system. We, we've been doing um, K through 12 online learning. Yeah. Um, since the pandemic started, we, we pulled uh, my youngest out of it. At sure. a public school. Well, she was at a charter because that's just what was in the area. But um, we pulled yeah. her out right in the beginning and she's been doing homeschooling. My wife has been, um, been a saint because she sits with her for hours a day and they provided all the books and materials and stuff. And she's learned a ton, which made me realize that the charter system is god awful. Yeah. Because uh, she was struggling when uh, she was at that school and when she, we pulled her out we like worked with her for you know a number of months and now she's excelling more than her classmates that have gone back already so yeah um, homeschooling is definitely I, a better I'm environment huge, huge proponent for um independent study so in long beach we had two programs you could do you could do it through EPHS, which is educational partnership high school or you could do it through ofl which is opportunities for learning and so you would go through your course you would get like you did it one course at a time. Most people have to go and show up to the locate. There's like several locations all over the city. You'd have to show up to the location. There'd be like two teachers in there. 
you have to be there for at least an hour a day, every single day, um, and you take tests there or whatever. The way I did it, because my grades and my test scores were so high, um, I was allowed to come once a week and drop off my work and take some tests and then leave. Uh, which got me a lot of dirty looks for other students that were in there that would see me come in on the same day, at the same time, drop all my shit off and leave. Uh, and then, like, <clears throat> I was given like one course at a time, and they gave me like one or two packets, and I was like, I need way more work than that. And so they sent them with the entire course, and I came back the next day when I wasn't scheduled for the next week, and I was like, I need more, give me more, just give me the whole year. And they're like, all right, and they gave me the whole year, and I came back a week later and did um, the first round of tests for that those courses. I, I, I finished out, I think it was like four months it took me to get through, or six months it took me to get through all four years worth of work. And then uh, you're only allowed 11 credits a month at the time. So I just had to like pop in and be like, hey, I'm here and then leave. And they would overturn uh, the credits like once a month. And then when it came to graduation, they given the opportunity, do you want to graduate at the high school where all your friends are at, where you came from? I believe you have to go into high school first and then opt out to independent study. But wherever all your friends are, graduate with them if you graduate on the track that you're supposed to graduate and they'll even allow you if you finish early to wait uh to graduate with your class i was like i'm two years ahead of everybody i don't know anybody in the junior year so no i, I just want to leave or it would have been senior year at that point um i'm like i just want to leave and then he's like all right here need to be my diploma and i got in the car my car was in the shop and mom's like what fucking took you so long what'd you do this time i was like graduated handed her my <laughs> diploma and she started crying <laughs> you didn't walk so i walked for my associate so she could see me walk but um i still went to proms i still went to formals still did all that social i had a job i had a job that i was able to work full time because i wasn't in school uh i worked for my mom though so i was blessed in that sense but um public schools it's it's too many people it's yeah it's also like in one class. it depends so on what state you're in too but people with teacher yeah, it depends on what, you're, what state you're in, too, because, like, in Arizona, we're doing homeschooling, K through 12. It's an online system. It's not even – it's credited, but it's not like it's part of any school system in Arizona. It's national, and we still have to take the state standardized testing. So we have to actually drive our 9-year-old to a building, leave her there for two hours so she can take a test, even though she's been quarantined for the last year and been – uh, uh, given the opportunity to you know take tests and do her work at her own sort of pace and it's helped her a lot now you have to throw her back into that cog and be like okay i guess hope you know let's hope that you uh that you remember everything you know we we went over and and that's stressful for kids so yeah. it's 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 not a good system anyway i, I, I gotta I drop guys i've got bedtime right stuff with my kids tonight so i got books to read right. and stuff okay but uh thank Take you guys for having there. me on see ya of course. Bye, guys. Man. Later, bud. Bye, bye. So, uh, I, um, oh, I was going to say, I think we should buy a whole bunch of land and start a hippie commune. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will run the chickens. Cascadia. Okay. You we'll can be in Cascadia. Dark the feathers. <laughs> I will become an iron worker. I have no idea how what I'm doing, but I will figure it out. No, you're going to teach the kids about government and how it works, Tommy. It's all I'm broken down, man. Fabulous. We'll be the hippies with the best hair. Broken down. Yeah, um, well. <laughs> my my nephew's school is uh like his school district. They're doing a really really amazing job at uh, like regional Native American history. Oh wow! Um, right, which is you know I I found surprising. He probably well, knows Seattle has a lot of respect for their, uh, indigenous culture. Well. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you got more monument than monuments, but is, yes, but I mean, com comparable to other states, yeah. Like they don't have like statues of their conquerors up all over the place. They have like displays, yeah. public displays of their culture to like bring awareness to it. Or I mean, um, what's his name? He's like six eight, skinny dude, pragmatic ideals. He uh, he he did a tour on his TikTok around Seattle and showing like different places of importance, yeah, but the Salish longhouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't you say we take some questions? I think, from he's, he's, I think he's actually native. Yeah. Is he Russian. Remember that. Huh? Isn't he like, is he like Russian Jewish? No, like uh, he was. Yeah. His family. He's, he's, well, he's not that tall, but if you've seen him in a doorway, he's, he's fucking tall. 
He's like that far from the top of the doorway. How tall is he then? He just lives in a short house. This is Seattle. Oh yeah, true. I mean, well, and South the Dakota roof, the roof is on. the opposite of Native American history. Like that's another thing Christy Nome did is she is trying to pay the school systems to teach them her version of history, which is like cowboys, pioneers, settlers, and not what actually happened to the Native American people. Uh, so Devin she has nothing to compare or to contribute to this conversation unless you need a dog caretaker. <laughs> uh, can you guys check? I just saw a death rise COVID-19 Trump administration. I'll check while you guys are going over the comments. Okay. Tommy's on it. So, uh, anybody have any questions for Miss Brooke here? Probably not. I'm not as popular as you guys. But uh, I'm an elder of the community at 36. Can we talk about this? I love <laughs> Mac. Mac is always on point. Our little intern. Um, so, because I've been in this, uh, I've been in the community for 23 years. I came out in 1998. And I, uh, 1998 to 99, but I started my come out process in 98. And I've been involved in uh, human rights for the LGBTQ plus community for 22 years, which led me into um, rights for people of color, women, so on and so forth. Because you can't, like, you can't see injustice in your own community and not notice the injustice from the oppressor everywhere else. And you quickly start to realize that when you have straight allies come over and take your side, your number gets a lot bigger. And so all marginalized communities and marginalized minority communities uh, put aside any differences that they have and came together. The white supremacy does benefit that everyone that's white, but more importantly, it benefits white, conservative, straight, cis men. And uh, there are functions uh, within white supremacy that forces different marginalized groups and minorities to compete against each other. As long as they're competing against each other uh, for survival, there is no uh, need for them to uh, link up. It's divide and conquer at that point. If all communities uh, are marginalized, minority or intersectional, came together, brought all of our own individual allies and our shared allies collectively, the white, straight, cisgender, conservative man is really outnumbered. Yeah. So, it's our um, time. I've been I've been fighting the fight for more than a third oh, yeah, exactly a third of my life, really. Yeah. Third of my a third of my life. Whew, that's sure. or two thirds of my life, should I say? Yeah, two thirds of my life I've been fighting the fight. Oh that's Joe's crazy. here. You know I don't know. White people are crazy. Oh like, Joe Bizarre. You know, I oh, honestly buddy. that's the thing I hate the most about white people is a lack of seasoning. And it's not a joke because it's true as fuck. Uh, that you always see in every single a dash of pepper. I have like old cookbooks that are like Betty, like Crocker, like old, like white people food. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> mention seasoning at all in that book. It's like li things that are banned seasoning, black pepper, no more than a pinch. And you know, either, okay. Yeah. And everything, everything is super white. I, I and I love seasoning. <laughs> so, now there's a little bit of a lag, Brooke. So, like, if we like say something, you might get like a response a little bit later. Okay. But you know, uh, so I have something that annoyed me. What? I bought a book. Okay, here we go. I bought a book that was supposed to be new from Amazon. Uh huh. It's anything but. I was okay. an Amazon bookseller for like a month and it was trash. Whoever sold it to oh. you probably made 13 cents. So you have got you ripped off and thing? they got ripped off. <laughs> so you guys both have link trees, right? I'm, I take it you have a link tree, Brooke? Yeah, I do. Okay, oh, yeah, so notice now when you try to add links, it'll give you the option for people to be able to donate to you or tip you or whatever through your link tree, which I'm like, eh, that's new or whatever. But yeah. also... It asks like is that something about affiliate program? And I clicked on it, and it's an Amazon affiliate program where you can uh, build your own. It, it was vanity storefront, and you put products on there for people to purchase, and if they're qualified products, you make money off of it. And I was talking about it in my live earlier, and there, everyone's like, "You should do it," and I'm like, "That would be a great place to books and other resources that Amazon we use." You, they will rape you in fees. I'm not yeah, kidding. That's a that's another thing. I was looking at it and I was like, I'm not going to, like, it's bad enough that sometimes I have to 
purchase through them because I can't find it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Or I'm just really impatient and want that book tomorrow because I have Amazon Prime. Um, but like, I don't want to contribute any more than I already am or have to Jeff Bezos. The guy right. that sits there and says a uh, stimulus check is a stupid idea while he collects government subsidies. It's just all, all screwy. I'm not happy about it. And yeah, unless you, unless you can get the product for free, Amazon's totally not worth it. Like by the time I got done selling for Amazon, I was charged seventy dollars. So I know I just I'm not a fan of sort of labeling ridiculous. it as new and then not. I'm probably going to send this book back honestly because like if you had said if it, if I was going to buy a used book, right? Like why would I not go to like a books or book finder where I could find this book for probably like three dollars. Like, yeah, I gotta pay for shipping, but whatever. Yeah, I'm just well, they probably I mean, tend to rip you off. They were just also getting ripped off, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're doing what they could. I mean, you can call if you well, you can't call Amazon, and you have to put your phone number in and have to call you back, which I but. You know, uh, so you can call them and say, make sure check your check your uh, your order just in case it switched to used when before you, while you were in the middle of your purchase process. But uh, well, even in that, like it should no, it was used that you'll keep the book, but you don't want to pay new price for a used book. They usually don't say send us a picture or show us. So they'll just be like, yeah, sure, whatever, take it. Like the pages, like we're all folded over. It's all screwed up, and this isn't the only year. Amazon won't let you list unless it's a certain quality. So that person probably couldn't list it. And listen, I'm not trying. I'm just, I'm not trying. I get what you're saying, Tommy. I'm just saying like the other person probably didn't like intend to deceive you. They had to because Jeff Bezos wants to deceive you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just, I, it's just annoying to me that like. Yeah. Blame Bezos. I mean, that's what's going on. That guy is a hot just don't mess. List it as, just, just don't list it as new. <laughs> you know, like I get it. It's on Prime and everything, but hey, first world problem. Chat? Is that up to you? like if I want to chat in this forum here? How do I do that? Is that just you guys? Do you have a chat? Do yeah. you have a chat bar on the right? Well, on to the left of it, there's a little red one, but that's if I want to contact Restream. Oh, uh, oh, it should be a blue one. It should be. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. You see it right here? It should be the private chat. Oh yeah, that's talking to us. That's She's talking, talking about you in the guys. In the chat function. Um, when Shelby does it, Shelby will uh, sign it to YouTube on her phone and then she oh. goes to the live and mutes it and then just chats that way. Um, okay. I I can chat from here because I have it off to the, the right. Um, That's okay. It's not a huge deal. Some people were asking questions and Mac gave me a compliment, so I wanted to say thanks. But that's um, okay. I can't, I can't scroll it on the think side. Though, and that's scroll back. That's okay, probably so, the last last book I'm gonna buy from Amazon. I'll either buy it completely brand new or I'll go to a books because yeah, everything I bought from there has been good. Or just shift also, to Brooke, you look great tonight. That was Mac. <laughs> yes, thank you, Mac. Great. Mac's so, great. Very sweet. And then looking for questions. Any, any do you guys have, if you guys have any questions, like pop them in the chat one more time for me. So I don't have to go looking for him because it, it gets drowned out pretty quickly. Somebody but, asked uh, me if uh, homeschooling was uh, hard. And the answer I, to that is it's not, but you do have to make the time for it. So that's the only obstacle. And if Brooke can do it with four jobs, you can yeah. too. Yeah. I'm, I'm not tore up about the book. I'm irritated. Oh that my gosh. Hold on. Plus, I'm going to say in the comment. I'm not tore up about the book. I'm irritated Someone that I paid, a book. That a I new paid, one this much money for a used book because I can buy it elsewhere for cheaper. Do you remember when he's like, ah, I have a bone to pick with this book. I go, here we go. <laughs> I just knew this is the path we were going down. Ooh, Honestly, my camera's going to try to cut. Hate the game, you know, Jeff Bezos, like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, like these are our new lords, you know, like he's creating a huge antitrust in the market. That's why you can only get that book so cheap on Amazon, you know, and and can't seek other places to get what you need. Like he designed it that way. He literally was willing to give up some of his own money to take over more of the market share. Oh yeah. Like he, he drove um, even some of the big uh, bookstores it, like down big time on their business. Like I watched this whole uh, documentary on him uh, and like 
what people, everyone is like free market, free market, free market. He is taking advantage of this free market and it's going to become yeah. Bezos market. Yeah. That's why I'm not a fucking do hair because you can't automate that shit. You can't automate dog hair either. So. <laughs> Oh well, but it was the same price for a new one at Barnes and Noble. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys know? Here, here's some old LGBTQ plus box for you. Back, uh, hey, can you? Can you? I'm done with sit dog. Can you? Can you block him? Yeah, I'm done. I've I've had three conversations with him. I'm over it. Block him. Period. Okay. Well, there's some anti-fascist guy that's I'm live streaming. I'm live streaming on uh, Instagram, and they're talking uh -huh. about you, anti-fascist. Uh -huh. It's got like a cross, and then some like sky in the background, and they've got three different accounts. Some it's like anti-fascist, friendly fascist, and they're like, do those two idiots know what they're? They sound like they follow you guys. As, they sound like they follow OK Hi, and they're offended by your. Good. Be offended by us. We don't fucking care. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like this is a regular thing for them, you know? Well, I've never seen them in our... Mac, do you have block powers on, on Twitch? Yeah, Mac, Mac, you are uh, you are a moderator on Twitch. Heads up. I think Sophie is too. Uh, so, Mac, if you can get in there and do what you need to do. Um, that's on uh, Brooks Instagram Live. Oh, Brittany, yeah, I don't know. I guess there's some like some shit talker trying to talk shit. Like, at what point did they uh, forget that we have absolutely zero fucks to give trolls? Like, first of all, trolls, we're smarter than you. I know you don't want to hear that, but it's true. We're smarter than you. We check our sources. We check our sources. Sources. We check our sources. 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 I mean, well, he's been like following and throwing a fit because I moved him to the restricted section of my Instagram because he wouldn't stop messaging me. Uh, I've had this talk on live with him twice now. I'm done. Like, bye. <clears throat> like, yeah. I've spent time on live explaining it. I'm done. Like, I don't owe you anything. Uh, bye. Yeah, I just blocked from the restream. I can't block him. I can block him on YouTube, and I can block him on restream. I can't block them on uh, on Twitch. <laughs> Max, sit dog. Shut up. Sit dog. Sit. Hush. Well, what's, what's the command that most people use for like stop barking? Oh, do you hear that barking in my house? No, 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 no. Oh, we're talking about sit dog. We're talking oh. about sit dog. I did hear, I did hear barking earlier. Yeah, there's like seven of them upstairs. I'm in my closet and they're upstairs. And yeah, I literally come Are out of the Harry closet. Potter closet. Isn't that under your staircase? It is. It is away from my children and my dogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. But She's it's got a Harry Potter closet. Set up. And quiet and small, and it's insulated. My partner, I mean, it's it's a really good studio. But um, I wanted to ask you guys. I wanted to talk about the pot thing with Kristen. Yeah, no, let's go for it. She, the reason, because people are asking, not in this thread, but people have asked me, like, why is she pressing so hard against it? And it's like, yeah, there's the whole thing with her base, and yeah, she's a conservative, and yeah, she's religious, or so she seems. But the thing is, and I know this from having been in the prison system and the judiciary maze, if you compare what the incarceration industry makes versus what the cannabis industry makes, it's, com it's, com it's comparable. Like they make about the same. So that is her fear. Cause then she like people lose jobs in the prison industry. But I don't really understand that portion of it because then they would gain them in the cannabis industry. But I think that's where the pushback is for that. Well, I think the pushback is, is that uh, it's the prison system that's lining her pockets. And if, uh, they can't lock people up for marijuana anymore. Uh, then the marijuana um, industry profits more and they're yeah. not going to lie in their pockets. Yeah, it's true. And then I think the whole voting thing comes into play as well. Like, you know, they like they can't incarcerate people who wouldn't vote for her, you know, just like they did with like cocaine and marijuana and then black and brown people couldn't vote, you know, like now you're going to have less people being incarcerated for these misdemeanors and felonies, and then they'll be able to vote. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, there will be, there'll be more votes um, eligible to stack against her. Yeah, more, and they're more likely to vote Democratic, so. Yeah, uh, I, I wonder if people, like, this is what gets me about the conservatives. How are they not noticing 
that of all the bills being passed, um, and I know they notice it, but uh, because they, they think it's in their favor, they're watching all these states try to pass like voting um, laws like that would restrict more people from being able to vote. And it's like, how do you not, see, you guys sit there and say, I need my AR-15 to protect myself against a tyrannical government. The government is already trying to take away people's rights. Democrats, Democratic states aren't doing that. They didn't try to do that with um, with it. They didn't try to take anybody's votes away. They tried to make it more accessible for more people to vote. And they are, are taking a chance that more people that vote red are going to vote red. So, like, they sit there and talk all this shit about why they need their Second Amendment, but they're always fighting the left. And while they're facing us, all the like Congress people on the right are spitting on their backs saying, yeah, go fight us. And all the Congress people are doing is putting this huge obstacle of ignoramis in our way to from to them. That's all it is. I mean, Democrats aren't really that much better with their pockets get lined, but at the end of the day, they're not trying to prohibit anybody from doing something. They're just trying to make it available to more people. So more voices are heard and Republicans, are just sitting there like no we can't win without cheating boo and you know like i really hope uh christy gnome gets um uh, ejected <laughs> Take a little press gnome out here i but i also am worried because then there goes like a good five percent of your content you're gonna have to fill <laughs> five, you have to fill five percent right. void They'll get I some mean, other asshole in there. I really don't believe that any asshole can be as bad as her. She she really has done some very serious damage here. And especially like as a woman watching that, it's devastating. It's dev especially. And then she has personal beef with the Native American community. I don't know if you guys know this. She tried to keep them from protecting their own sacred tribal land. Like she tried yeah, to block uh, them. Uh, for the rally, right? That happened? Well, like they said, if you're not going to protect us from COVID, we're going to protect our reservation from yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. They shut down the shut down the off ramps to the yeah, to yeah. And then that pissed her off because the tourists couldn't come through, and that's how she makes her money because of fucking Mount Rushmore. And so there was and like that, this whole dialogue. Yeah, they shut. Yeah, they. Uh, <coughs> I remember them shutting down the freeway or something. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's really done some serious damage here, not just like with decisions that have been made, but like community. Like we are trying to build a bridge between the Native American community and she is thwarting that effort. But I mean, eventually push is going to come to shove and they're going to have to do something here because that's the thing out here is the land back movement and they want that land back, you know, and that's yeah. I think that's where the future they is. Deserve it. Yeah, they and absolutely they their land. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they technically all of this land is their land. Yeah, and you know, I'm aware just, of that. I, it's just it's 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 crazy to me. They put like you know some of the worst humans in American history mm -hmm. on Native Amer the face of a Native American rock face. You know, well, the Native yeah, American sacred, people sacred. wanted to do that, and then they wouldn't give them the permits for it. Just like they won't give them the permits now for the homeless camps. And then a white guy, Borglum, got word of it, and then they let him do it. And now that is what it is. So. It wasn't it, the it wasn't the guy that did crazy it, like, horse, the right? KKK. What? <laughs> Sorry, I heard uh, both at the I, same time. I said, uh, wasn't it the guy that did uh, Mount Rushmore part of the KKK? Yeah, uh, he had I, some backing in it. I can't remember who. I don't think it was him. I think it was one of the guys working on it. But the guy that did it was actually really big fan, a really big, really good friends with uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, I mean, they all have That's ties to like white clownery, you know. At the end of the day, that's what Mount Rushmore is. It's fucking racist rocks, heads on rocks is all it is. But okay, I was so about, I found the information on it. It says while it has been claimed that Borglum, uh, Gutzon Borglum, uh, was a member of the Ku Klux Klan, an article in the Smithsonian Magazine uh, denies that there is proof that he officially joined the KKK. That said, he became deeply involved in Klan politics. Attending clan rallies and serving on and serving on clan committees, but you didn't join. Okay, God, the like, that's everything. a thing out here. That's a thing. I mean, there's still fucking clans out here. This, I'm telling you, they come out here to hide. Crazy horse didn't get finished yet. No, isn't that like okay? Uh, so let's do talk about crazy horse for a minute because yeah. that's 
first thing that people always say is crazy horse will never be finished. Crazy horse isn't finished because it's still sacred native land. And what happened was the family who owned crazy horse, they were offered a lot of money, like back in the fifties, like a lot of money for that time to sell it to the government. And they said, no, we're not doing that. We're keeping it. And they couldn't continue to keep working on it, but they met some Polish guy they trusted and his family. And they said, you can have this, but only your people can work on it. Like you, your family. And that's why it will probably, Probably never be finished, but it is something to go and behold and be a part of because that's still sacred. It's all sacred native land, but that part of it has not, it has integrity. So that I always tell people to go there. The Black Hills is all beautiful. Fuck Mount Rushmore. That's trash. Like go, go be in the hills. <laughs> it is trash. Go be in the hills. Go be with nature. Mount Rushmore, you're going to pay eight bucks and you're going to go stand there for a fucking five minutes anyways. It's, it can't touch the Black Hills. The Black Hills is spiritual, but not in a Jesus way. You know, it's in yeah. here. It's spiritual, not religious. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I, there's places in Washington that are like that, yeah. Sure. Like, yeah, it's weird for me because, like, over on the, on the west side, they have there's trees everywhere, right? So you don't really get the the age of the landscape really. Um, but then you go to the west side or the east side, and like you go to this places um, near there's the the Snake River near Pullman, uh, and you'll just see like cutouts in this valley, right? Like in the Snake River, just cutouts from like millions tens of millions of years of just like you know slowly being carved out uh yeah it's like something different about it. it's weird it, it it's like it's a little surreal like looking around and seeing the same rock faces that you know humans have seen for tens yeah. of, millions of years we come from rocks you know and water is life i mean that's what that's evolution you know honestly you go back and i'm a hippie you go back and you be with nature and you get grounded <laughs> Seriously, it really helps. I do. I do what's called a uh, forest I bathing. Have you heard of this? Okay, no. What's up? Okay, so like every, every time I tell people you should try forest, I was actually talking to Get and Shiggy with it um, in a okay. private DM. She yeah, was yeah. like a little like she's like I don't know. I just I'm not like into God and all that. And I'm like, well, the only thing I follow closely, like the mo the closest I follow to any spirituality or religion is Taoism because it's all about balance, you know. Um, yeah. And a Taoist practice is called forest bathing. And a lot of people do it barefoot, but you're, you're wearing clothes. You go into the woods or on a trail or whatever that's like not like a touristy spot, but like somewhere that it's usually calm and collected. And when you walk, you just you take in the smells of everything and the sounds of everything and the textures of like what's underneath your feet. And you, you do that deep breathing. It sounds a lot like meditating. It's meditating, but it's while you're walking, yeah. you're just you're just absorbing the nature around you, and it, it, it's been shown to reduce stress levels big time. Like, yeah, I'm not you sure guys know a while ago. I posted a video from me um, hiking uh, Lackamas Lake down by us, and like I needed, I was getting to a breaking point with TikTok and just being like irritated all the time and frustrated. Yeah. And so, like, I wasn't able to think of content. I was losing my drive, which recently I kind of lost my drive, but it's been working so much. And uh, I told my husband, I'm like, I got to get out of here. We need to we need to go for a hike. And so the next day we went for a hike and I got to take all that in. And I felt amazing afterwards. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. I recommend go it to everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go somewhere, like, just, you know, try this out. Go somewhere that doesn't have a lot of people, right? Uh, there's a ton of them. Everybody likes to go to like state parks and like places that are always on Instagram, but there's a ton of places that aren't, that are actually uh, more amazing that I don't share on my Instagram. I don't use Instagram that much because I don't want people to go there. Um, but yeah, if you go to like the woods and you're by yourself and you just stop and listen, you're going to hear a lot of things that you wouldn't have previously heard, right? Like small rustle, stuff like that. It's calming. Like just go. Yeah, it's, it. it's, a, it's a new experience. That's extremely comfortable because you're, you've experienced it before, but you're actually tuned into the experience versus just got to get to the end of the trail or who am I with? Are they paying attention? Are they enjoying themselves? Am I enjoying myself? Why does my knee hurt? Do I get stuff and shit? What did that fucking bird just say? Like very that. I always think birds are out to get me. So I'm ready to fight any single one. I see. <laughs> like, well, our attention spans are destroyed from, from technology and social media. And like, you're destroying your circadian rhythm, looking at your phone in the morning and at night. And so, yeah, yeah we need to disconnect a little more. I, I, I think we should, we, we should, 
I remember there was a, a movement, a hashtag a while about called Get Out. Now that's clearly changed because of movies, but um, or Get Outside. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know a, little she trick, a little trick for finding um, trails uh, are not super populated. Um, use All Trails app. All Trails yeah. app, you can, you can literally type in, um, you know, not popular or not crowded or whatever. And it'll you'll find some spots i found a lot of good spots on all trails that like i've gone and maybe seen one or two people there like amongst the trails and you pass each other and then that's that um, also get really good at hiking and do um harder trails that you have to like, climb up high to get to like the top of the the trail not yeah, a lot of people make, make it sure to the top <laughs> that you have like a compass water cell reception because i've gotten lost before and then like a sheriff had to come get me it was a whole thing so be safe in your hiking adventures hey, everybody <laughs> be safe. yeah like i mean i have a natural sense of direction i know where south north east west is no matter where i'm at like i can okay. usually figure out which direction um but yeah, I think it's smart to like I mean also if you if you open up all trails while you still have reception and you you open make sure you have a full battery and a, like a battery pack to go with you to charge it if it starts to get low. But they have a GPS function where you can record your your hike and it'll work off your GPS versus off your cell service. So it'll track you on the trail and you can find your way back if you need to. That's just a heads up. Yeah. I feel like Brooke's the mom of the commune. I feel like they should have oh. a better. Sorry, the jet, the get out joke got me. Um, <laughs> I would be a mom of a hippie commune. I would uh, love that. Just go do outdoorsy stuff. You don't gotta like like I like to. I like to go like uh, fishing. You know, of I course. Think. You you have a big fish profile picture, huh? I don't. I don't oh, know. why not? <laughs> I, one because i'm not that good at fishing no uh i, like just, <laughs> if I was good it'd be different if it was good it'd be different i have i i have one picture of me with a five pound fish somewhere mm -hmm. uh and i it doesn't go on any profile picture or anything like that i just i, I think it's more impressive that you don't know where the picture is <laughs> right i just i took the picture so that people knew uh that that i i so if people are like you're a shitty fisherman, I can lie and be like, no, I caught this thing with power bait. <laughs> what was it? What was the fish? <laughs> it was a trout. Oh, okay. Well, for a trout, that's a, a trout. That's a pretty big trout. Yeah. yeah, I caught it. It was weird because like, brook trout was it uh, brook trout? <laughs> brook tr <laughs> brook trout or what kind of trout was it? I don't think brook trout get that big, but. Um, <laughs> It was a rainbow trout, yeah. Out here, all we oh, have yeah. is walleye. Oh, pretty yeah. walleye and some bass. But yeah, um, they, they spend our state spends a ton of money on, but yeah, uh, on on our fisheries or hatcheries. I ca I went and bought like some glow in the dark or not glow in the dark, but like light up bobbers, and I threw out there. It was like two in the morning, and it, I was I was really close. I threw it really close to shore. I didn't even know it was maybe five feet off of shore, right? Because it was dark. Um, and I was like casting at an angle, and I caught this Don't thing. And how to cast? I I do. It was just you just summer, you so. just said you're bad at fishing, so I'm gonna. I, I did. I am bad at story fishing. I don't, that you don't know how to cast. Like I'm, I'm good with the like, rod. Not a Neanderthal. <laughs> like I, I can finesse with the with the rod. I'm just not like. I don't study it a lot, you know. Like, but anyways, so I cast this bobber. Like it's pitch black, two o'clock in the morning. Maybe three, I don't know. And this bobber just starts drifting towards me. I'm like, is there a wind? And I'm like reeling, reeling, reeling. This thing is like maybe five, ten feet from me. And it's just wham. And then I reeled it and it was already pretty much there at the dock. So because it came to me. Oh, so the, the fish, fish was yeah, What? That uh, was, was a drum fish. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was it was <laughs> over it. Um well, I'm sure you catch plenty of fish on TikTok, Tommy. Oh ugh, God! I, have you <laughs> like have you ever been in one of his lives? I I used to be like constantly in his lives moderating. You're gonna bat him off? Like I would, every other every other message I sent was keep it in your pants, lady. <laughs> it's not that bad anymore that I that I stopped hitting the for you page. Well, that uh, yeah, and since the elections aren't going on, because man, everybody was he had gentlemen in there saying I have the same the regular. Put it back in your pants, bud. Exactly. Like, 
I didn't have a pot today, Lady Nerd Fox. I did have one last yeah. night. I got a little too high I know. and I fell asleep real early. I know we talked about this already, but I had full screen on because the uh, sit dog posted that thing. So I was like, whatever, I went to full screen when I showed you guys this. I didn't get to see everybody's reaction. But how cute was this? Wow. Well, <laughs> it's cute. It's cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little dinosaurs. Oh, what? wow. Is that, All right. Is that 18 months? I'll, yeah, that's nice. That's yeah. good. What size is that? 18 months? The, no, this is, uh, unless I bought, yeah, no, 6 to 12. Okay, that's months. definitely on the 12 side. That's a big yeah, it's really, it's probably, probably, like a, probably like a 12 year and a half. Uh, I could imagine he could he could probably wear it already because he's big. I haven't said a uh, picture how big he is. He's big. He's tall too. Well, I'm glad you guys got that worked out because the family court is a fucking shit show. Oh, man. it's not worked out yet. No, it's not worked out. Well, I thought it was. It's not. <laughs> but you're seeing uh, it, right? Yeah. Silver mm -hmm. linings, you know, and all that. Yeah. Like I don't like without getting into yeah. detail because that's Tommy's business to spend. Sure. When you have a good man, just because you don't get along with him, but you have a good man that's not going to try to poison your kid against you, uh, wanting to take care of his kid and spend time with his kid, and, you, and you're going to make that difficult. Like that, don't use your kid to be malicious. That's absolutely dumb. I mean, I don't know the specifics of the situation. As you said, it's Tommy's business. But what I will say that doesn't touch too close to anybody is that family court is so incredibly flawed for all parties involved. And these judges can't possibly like they're they're but they, what makes them so biased is that they're jaded because they're there every day. Like somebody on a yeah. bench who's seeing you for five minutes can't possibly make a good assessment about your life. Plus, more often than not, they're just somebody who knew somebody and that's how they got the position anyway. So the family courts, you know, it really is like when it comes to the foster care system, I mean, that is like human trafficking, just like incarceration is human trafficking. You know, it's a renewable resource for cash. And so that's all. I mean, we talk about the American educational being a educational system being a farce and family courts a farce, too. So I'm sorry, Tommy, that you're going through that because I know what it's like. It's very frustrating and it's very breaks your heart, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's been rough. It's I got it. it uh, I don't know, three weeks. As time goes on, things will fall away and things that seem important now won't be as important then, both to you and to her. And, you know, things... Yeah, it's just the, the, the biggest problem is it's just taking forever. Yeah, and it will. That's the way it goes. That's fucking yeah. court, man. Well, a lot of it was my lawyer. Uh, yeah. When I had... I've had shitty representation before too, and that's a bitch. It doesn't matter though. Like whether you pay ten grand for one or have a public defender, if you get a shitty lawyer, is shitty. There's no way to know until it's too late. Is the problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sucks. You, yeah, it sucks. Um, how long were you guys planning on staying on? I was gonna like, get ready to wrap it up. Yeah, I got I a pee. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Did you say you thanks got a for pee? having me? <laughs> Brooke, don't okay, go so, yet. Stay after. Stay after for a second. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so. Um, I'm going to do my run through real quick. It's going to go. Brooke is new to our channel. <laughs> it's going to go to me and then it'll zoom in on Tommy. He'll do this. Okay. Bye thing. And then um, we'll end the stream, but all of us will still be here and then I'll bring the video back to normal. So let's get into that real quick. Brooke, do you want to say your goodbye to everybody? Yeah, thanks for listening in. And uh, if you want to see more of me, head on over to the Bite Me podcast out on all platforms now. There you go. Okay, so you guys don't forget to subscribe. Uh, make sure you click that bell and check your notifications, as always. If you can, if you're able to, if you would like to, we would love for you to show some support over on patreon.com slash Network, And be sure to follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at OK High Network. You can find more uh, from Brooke at thetruthfulgroomer.com. Also follow her over on TikTok, The Truthful Groomer, and Instagram, The Truthful Groomer as well. I'm going to push this over to Tommy, and he's going to take us away. All right, guys, be sure to head over to OK High Podcast and give them a like. And check me out on Twitter, Insta, and the website. I'll see you next time right here on Bite Me.